Okay, so let's talk about difference of squares. One of the biggest kinds of factoring you've been running into is ones that look like this. My smart board's freaking out, so you're just going to have to deal with the fact that it changes colors randomly. Sometimes. So, okay, would you please factor that? It should be really easy. What did you get? Good. And why do you know if, how about this? If you had to prove that you were right, how could you prove it? You'd foil it. You do x times x, you make x squared, and then the outside and the inside would make nothing, right? Because they can't. And then the last would make negative 16, and look, I got the same thing I wanted. All right, so you can always check to see if you're right on fact. That's one of the cool parts. All right. So that was different to squares, but so is this, and it's a lot harder. Try that one. Not that much harder, but it's harder. Drill in the. Since I'm recording, I don't use any names. I learned all your names yet. I will eventually. Uh, but right now, it's been so intense. And frankly, I'm not learning some of the names. I'm not going to work super hard to learn some of the names until I know you're actually going to stick around. Because I've already lost quite a few kids. I keep a few, too. How many are new since the beginning of the year? That's how. Okay, so I got like three or four new ones. And so it all changes so much, and then all of a sudden it'll be the same. And it will stay the same for the whole rest of the semester. But I'm going to really focus on learning names uh, starting right after this test comes back. Because some people will get their tests and go, crap, I got an F on my first test. I'm going to run away now, and I don't blame them, uh, because it, that says it's going to be really hard in here if I can't do the old stuff. All right, so 5x squared. That's the square root of that. 5x squared. Blue and white stripes. Finish. Negative 4n. Positive 4. Yes. Even if I knew your name, I wouldn't say it. Just because if there's some, like, evil soccer person out there looking for you, uh, I would have just identified that this person is here in Minnetonka. It's true. It's a privacy thing. So I, I'm allowed to post these on YouTube as long as I don't use personal information. So. All right. Next step is make sure that you don't have another thing that can factor. Like a lot of times one of these two would factor. That one's close because it's got a minus. Remember the difference of squares? It's got a perfect square right there. It's got a perfect square right there. But it doesn't have a vertex bar right there. So this one cannot factor further. I'll show you one that would have. Oh, sorry, sorry. This one gets kids every time. Seems like it's totally wrong. But then since kind of I've warned you here, what, what's the part that's wrong? Yes. And it would become. You got it. That's the final answer. All right. Now, what we're going to launch into now that I didn't want to do uh, earlier because I was afraid it would completely explode your mind is trying to factor cubes. Now, we just did difference of squares. Now, let's do difference of cubes. X cubed minus 8. Please write this one down. You want an example of this. All right. You're going to factor this. It's a lot like the other one, except it's cubes now instead of squares. So you take the square root, not the square root. What do you think? The cube root of both of them. So the cube root of x cubed is x. And the cube root of 8 is 2. Because 2 times 2 times 2 makes 8. And then since it starts with a minus, you start with a minus. That all makes sense. Now we need something else, right? You'd think you'd have three things like this, but you don't. You have two things. One small thing and one big. And the rest of it, you take the first one you wrote down squared. So the first thing I wrote down was x, so I put x squared. Then you put the two things together 2 and the x makes 2x. And then you put the last one squared. 
2 squared makes 4. And then, the last one is always positive. And, this one is always the opposite of that one. So since it's a minus problem, you always start with a minus. You always end with a positive, always, always. And then, you always make this sign opposite of that sign. There's my final answer. Now, again, how would I know I was right if I actually took the time to multiply this all the way out? If I multiplied this all the way out, it should, when you simplified it all down, do that. Now, how do you do this kind of get? You do first this, this, this. And my clam method, I'm growing a green giant clam here. That, that. My dream world, I'll actually see a giant clam. I've thought about the giant clam so many times. I've seen the video of them. I've seen pictures of them. See how the green thing looks like a giant clam shell? They're, and they're big. Bottom of the ocean, can't tell you exactly where, but Caribbean type. And people have been known to snorkel down to them yeah, where they can't... Uh, yeah, and they, well, kind of, because the clam, stick, they stick their hand in the clam to, like, touch it, because it looks kind of cool down in there, and then what happens? Kind of shuts. Their hand is now stuck in the clam. They're, they're like the size of a big suitcase, and they're heavy, and they're cemented to the ocean floor. So that's not a really good place to be if you were snorkeling, and you took a big breath, and you swam down. Right? And then the other thing, that even, even, yes, you can get trapped in that. Uh, Yes, all the time. Usually divers, have you ever heard of the divers always have a knife with them? Well, that'd be an example of what you want the knife for. You'd have to pry it open, you have to try to cut the thing open. It's really tough to do, even then. But you have, yes, you can kill it. But you'd rather have your hand back, wouldn't you? And be able to surface again someday? Yeah, you probably, so. <laughs> so don't stick your hand inside the giant clam, very dangerous. Okay, moving on. Um, quadratic equations, there are four methods, but I don't want to start with that. I just want to start with why do we care about solving a quadratic all of a sudden? Because all of these things that we were solving, like factor this, factor that, one of the main reasons you want to factor is so you can solve a quadratic. That is a quadratic. It's got a squared in it. Can I factor it? Yes. Would you please factor that? Hopefully it should be a snap for you. If it's not, then you have a lot of work to do between now and tomorrow. You're only going to get harder than that. Now, quadratics usually are equations. Is this thing that I have on the board right this second an equation? No, because it doesn't have a what? An equal sign. And you need something on both sides of the equal sign. So I need an equals, and they're almost always equations set to zero. And if they aren't equations set to zero, they need to become one. Like, for instance, if this had been x squared plus 3x equals negative 2, that's okay to start with that, but then you'd need to move the negative 2 over to the other side and set it equal, the whole thing equal to 0, so it looked like that. Okay? So, you got this quadratic. It's set equal to 0. This is why factoring is a good thing, because if I go x and x and 2 and 1 plus and plus, this was a nice easy one, okay? Now I can see my answer is really easy. What would make this whole equation equal zero? I could stick some number here and here that would actually make it work. Well, I just figured out which ones would make it work. That negative one right there tells me negative one would have made this whole equation equal zero. And the other thing, what do you think I could put right there? Negative two. So my answers are negative one and negative two. Again, if I stick negative one in right here, and a negative one right there, it'll come out to zero. The point is, what number can I stick in that makes this work? How else could I have gotten it? I could have graphed it. If I graph this, it's going to be a parabola, right? And I already know the answers are negative one and negative two, so I know it's going to touch here. Here. It's probably this kind of shape. Okay. So, is that an option? Can you graph? Yes. But 
it's way easier to factor. Like once I've got done factoring that, that was a snap. But there are some that won't factor, but they still have answers. Then you have to graph them, or you have to use a quadratic formula. I'm going to show you both ways and let you pick. Uh, but I strongly recommend that you understand the idea that you can graph one side of the equation and graph the other side and see where they cross. If that works for any nasty looking equation, just graph the left side, graph the right side, see where they cross. So say I had 2x plus 5 equals x minus 4. What can you do? Graph that side, graph that side, see where they cross. That's all I gotta do. So how about the one we just had? Graph this side, y equals that. Graph that side, y equals 0, which is also known as the x axis and see where they cross. See where the two things cross, wherever they cross, they touch. Those are your answers. Is it possible that a curve and a straight line could touch and only have one answer? Yes, and they have one very special step. If I go like this, and they cross like that, that's called a double root. Do you remember that from HA? Yeah. You, what happens there is you get two of the exact same answer. It would look like this. Once you factored it, it would come down to this. And I get negative 2 and negative 2. How can I have two answers that are the same thing? Because that's one of those spots where it touched at negative 2 only. And then it bounced like right there. All right, so let's get you some practice on graphing this. So if I had x squared plus 3x plus 2, You'd graph that and that is your first two lines of your calculator. Everybody grab your graphing calculator. If you don't have one, come borrow one of mine and make it snappy. Okay, so I'm going to get into graph here. I'm going to graph those two. And that's not the graphing calculator. Where is my graphing calculator? Yes, you should be in function mode, not uh, sequence mode. Uh, go into mode. And once you're in mode... Under the mode button, there are several different mode options. Go to the one that says FUNC, F-U-N-C. You don't want S-E-Q, you want FUNC. All right, so now I'm going to go to Y equals. I'm going to clear that out because I don't need that. And instead, I want X squared plus 3X plus 2. X squared plus 3X plus 2. All right, and then it's zero for the other one. All right, now I hit graph. Now, if mine looks different than yours, it's because mine's zoomed in farther. And you can do zoom and then zoom in. I'll go back to the ways yours probably looks right now. I'm going to do zoom six. That's your standard zoom. It looks like this. You see, you can't see as well, can you? So if I want to zoom in, I go zoom in, set number two. And then I got to tell it where. I got a blinky dot right in the middle of my screen. And you do too, if you, in case you don't, don't notice that. I want to move it over and say, I want you to zoom in right there. And it will. Okay, it comes in. And I can see my answers are negative two and negative one. The squared button. Oh, if you wanted, if you don't want to do the carrot, you would use that button. And your all three of your plots are on. You're going to need to go up and turn all of those off. Go on top of them and hit enter. All right. Now, um, what if you didn't know for sure that that was negative one and negative two? This is really important because sometimes they came out to decimals, and it's really hard to tell. It's like 1.5, maybe I don't know, 1.4. So how do you find out exactly? You go to second, calculate. Everybody try this right now on the graph you have up. Second, calculate. And then you want to find where two lines are intersecting. Because you had graph two things, right? Remember, one of them is the x-axis. You just couldn't see it. It was right on top of the axis. So we want intersect, which is number five. And then it says first curve. It wants you to put the little spider thing on the first line. It is. It's on one of the lines. It doesn't matter which one's first. Now it wants to put the spider on the second line. See, the spider just moved to the other line. And then you hit enter. And then the third time, you have to move the little spider 
close to one of the places where they intersect. The third one wants you to guess where they intersect. I'm guessing they intersect about there, which is negative 2.02. And I hit enter and it tells me the official answer. So you hit enter effectively three times. First one is to tell it be on the first line. Second one is beyond the second line. Third one is about where is it. And then it tells you the final answer, negative 2. Now I'm going to get the other one, which is over here. I'm going to say second, calculate the intersection, which is number 5. First curve, yeah, I'm on it. Second curve, I'm on it. If you only have two lines in, you can just hit enter in. It'll automatically jump for the first one. But the third part is important. Guess is like get it near where they are crossing. There's the other spot. I'm close enough. Now I hit enter. And that's that negative one. All right. So this will solve a lot of problems for you. And it's allowed on most major tests. But it's not allowed to mine. So don't get too dependent on it. So how are you supposed to solve it if it doesn't factor? Like, let's say it was like this. X squared minus 5X minus 7. Trust me. That one doesn't factor. Oh, wait a minute, it doesn't. No, no, I can make so it's, it's close to factoring, but it doesn't factor. But it still has answers. If you, if you don't have a calculator, calculator would be awesome. You just set it equal to zero and you graph this, graph that, and I'd have my answer wherever they touched. But what if you don't have a calculator? No calculators tomorrow on the test. test, 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 test. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, you'll have to be able to do this without a calculator. There won't be any complicated multiplications. Like, you know, if you can't do 6 times 8. Yes. So that's what I'm trying to show you right now, is you can use something else. There's Remember how I said there was four ways to solve a quadratic? I sh one way is factoring, one way is graphing, and then there's this way. Quadratic formula. X equals negative B plus or minus square root. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And then you have to have it memorized. Serious. Better write that one down and memorize it. Because I would bet you money that tomorrow there will be a problem like this that you can't factor and you'll have to use this formula because you don't have a calculator. All right. <laughs> X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC. All over to a. I do know that in five different songs, but I don't want to mess up your head. No, you'll just get confused. If you go Google it, or not Google it, if you go to YouTube and try to find quadratic formula songs, I've got it there where I actually sang it five different songs. Did you? All right, anyway, there's better ways you could spend your time studying for this test, but you do need to know this. All right, so now I'm going to replace this with an empty spot and put in B. What's B? Negative 5. And what's this B? Negative 5. And then what's A? A is what's ever there. What's there? 1. See, it's negative, negative B. So it would end up being plus 5. But my point is, don't just assume that you don't need this negative here. You do. You need a negative and another negative, and that makes it positive 5. All right, so back to the A. The A is 1. The C is negative 7. The sign in front of it goes with it. Negative 7. All over 2 times A. What was A again? 1. So there's my answer. It's just messy. I'm going to clean it up. 5 plus or minus square root of 25 minus 4 times 1 times negative 7. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 7 is 28. Negative times negative makes positive 28. All over 2a, which is 2. And you are you would not be expected to know what the square root of 53 is, but your answer you'd leave like this. Do you get how that's actually two answers? Because you need to do it once with plus, and then once with minus. All right. Remember, those are x equals things. So there's how to use the quadratic formula to solve them. No problem. The a is the first number, the b is the second, and the c is the third. There's the a, there's the b, there's the c. So I'll give you another one. Let's say we had uh, 4x squared minus 3x plus 7. What's a? 4, what's b? Negative 3, and what's c? 
seven. So if I was gonna do it, if I were you, I'd kind of like sing the song to yourself as you're doing it. X equals negative b, but I wouldn't put b. I'd put negative negative three plus or minus square root of b squared, which would be what nine minus four a c four times four times seven all over two a, which would be eight. There it is. You just have to simplify it a little bit and you're done. Not that hard if you know the formula. It's actually pretty easy. All right. So what if you're having trouble factoring it? Can you imagine that you might get on a problem and you can't like, man, this is really hard to factor. I can't figure it out. Could you go do this? Yes, absolutely. This will save your butt sometimes. You can find the answers without having to factor it. And then as long as you know your square roots, because that's the hardest part. What are some of the common ones in there? Like 144, and that would be what? 12 or 25 and then it'd be 5 or uh, 36 and then it would be 6. If it was not, yeah, if it was like 37, just leave it. It's square 37. Yes. Do you have trouble with the square roots? Okay. Make a, make a list for yourself. Just take all the numbers and square them like, you know, 2 squared, 4, 3 squared, 4 squared, 6. Just make a big list like that. And then, Memorize it the night before. All right, moving on. Um, if you have to solve this one, is it a quadratic? Yes. Is it set equal to zero? No. So could I go like this? 2x squared minus 56 is equal to zero. And yeah, I could do that. And could I use a quadratic formula then? Yes, I could. X equals negative B plus or minus square root. Okay, what? what's B? Wait a minute. There's no B on this. But there is a B. It's just zero so a is 2 b is 0 c is negative 56 if you want to do it that way go ahead if i were you on this kind i would just solve it like a normal equation and let's see if anybody can do this right everybody write this down and then everybody divide it by 2 and i think you can do that what's half of 56 good so it's x squared equals 28 finish it i know you probably don't know the answer but divide by 2 divide by 2 x squared equals 28 Square root, square root. What's the answer? X equals square root of 28. Raise your hand if you think that's right. You're close. Absolute value of X is this. Yes, remember the square root is absolute value. So then you got two answers. X equals square root of 28 and X equals negative square root of 28. It'd be really easy to forget that, wouldn't it? Whenever you do the square root of x squared, you have to have absolute value, and that gives you two answers. By 28, because I did 56 divided by 2 is 28. But did you have some else? Yes. Yes. This or that are the same thing. This answer is just written all the way out, and this is, they're both equal. They're both fine. It's not 70, it's a 28. Sorry, it's a messy 2. Okay, it was 28 because it was 56 divided by 2. Sorry, I'm messy. All right, uh, let's move on. This one, if you had to solve this one, my first thought would, would be if it factors, I'd like to factor it. If it doesn't factor, I personally would want to use my calculator, but since you can't on the test tomorrow, you're probably going to have to use x equals negative b plus or minus square root, b squared minus 4, I see, all over 2a. And then you get your answer that way. But either way, if it's solve, it isn't just factor it. It's solve it and then, or sorry, factor it and then whatever the answer is to that. Like, let's say it's 2x and x. And let's say, how do we make a negative 2? Well, 2 and a 1. And then one of them has to be negative, right? So let's say I make it a negative here and a positive here. Did that work? No, that didn't work. Um, maybe this is one of those I can't think. Uh, so what if I do uh, two here and a one here? Does that work? What's that make? What's that make? Minus an x. That's four x minus an x, three x. It's really close. But it's sine is opposite. So then what do you do? 
so it just it's got an S, it's a plus, it's a minus, and now I bet I have it. If you can't do this, then you won't make it in here. You've got to be able to factor. All right, so then I switch the signs around. Now I check it to see outside and inside. Negative 4x, positive 1x makes negative 3x. Okay, it worked. But I'm not done. The final answer is x equals 2 because that's what would make this 0. And what would make this part 0? I have to make 2x plus 1 equal to 0. Doesn't that look like an equation I could just solve? 2x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1. And yep, if I put in a negative 1 half right there. So there's two answers. x equals 2 and x equals negative a half. Guess what would have happened if I would have graphed it? It would have touched at negative a half and 2. Guess what happens if I put it in the quadratic formula? I bet you I get 2 and negative a half, and I'm going to prove it to you. In fact, you're going to prove it to you. Right now, stick those numbers into the quadratic formula and see if you can get it to come out to negative a half and 2. And if you can't, then you're going to have trouble on that part in the test, so try it. You could, unless it specifically says factor this. It says solve this. You can use any. You can use the quadratic formula. Sure. All right, try the quadratic formula on this one right now. I'll put it up here in case you forgot. Best thing to replace a variable is an empty parenthesis. It's really slick because then you drop them right in there and it helps you remember if there are two negatives that the negatives are separated and stuff like that. The question is, can you simplify it? Three plus or minus nine minus nine plus sixteen. Nine and sixteen. Twenty-five squared to twenty-five. Oh, sweet! I know that one. Number four. And guess what? If they actually factors, you'd know it. You'd know this one. If this one comes out to a weird number like twenty-six, you'd just leave it and just it. And you, because we don't expect you to know it. And then this is the kind of factor because it comes out to a nice number. 3 plus or minus 5 over 4. So I do it once with plus. 3 plus 5 over 4 and once with minus. 3 minus 5 over 4. And that becomes 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 divided by 4 is 2. That's that one. And 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 over 4 is negative a half. And that's that. Raise your hand if you get that. Good. And that's the big part of what we do in this class. A lot of factoring, a lot of quadratic stuff. Okay, and then, of course, you learn more new stuff on top of that. This is the stuff you learned before that's really important. Okay, so this one, just a quick note. What would you do first? You can't solve these unless it's equal to zero. So I've got to get this to go to the other side. So I'd subtract 20x from both sides, and then I'd have... 15x cubed minus 35x minus 20x squared equals 0. And I'd have to factor it. Do you notice that they all have big nasty numbers? Because if you had to factor that, it would be awful. So factor out a 5 first. And then what else comes out of all of them? An x comes out of all of them. And then you'd have a bunch of stuff left. And that's good enough. As long as you get the idea that you take the 5x out of everything first. And you get this moved over so that it's equal to 0. Those are two like, things you had to remember there. This one's only issue is that you won't factor. And as soon as you realize you won't factor, what do you got to do? Put it out of formula. All right. Good enough. And now you got a worksheet. And some time to work on it. I'll give you some hints on the first few here. So let me hand them out. I'll keep the tape running so that I can help kids with the first few problems here. Um, two, three, four, five. Kind of funny, say tape running, but there's no tape. 
I'm digital. One, two, three, five, six. Four. Okay. Numero uno. 25x squared minus 20x. Plus four equals zero. I will promise you this one will factor. I will help you start it. I got to have a 25x squared, so I got to have probably a 5x and a 5x. But it could have been a 25x and a 1x. You get, because I could multiply two different ways, I could get a 25. And I'm going to use, I'll tell you, I use this 5x and 5x. And after that, a 4, well, it's probably 2 times 2. Or it could be 4 times 1. Okay, let's go with 2 and 2. Then the last thing is, do you get that it can't be both positives? Otherwise, there's no negatives in my answer, and I can't get a negative to ever come out, can I? Therefore, if I can't use two positives, do I just use one negative? No, because that wouldn't make positive four. So what do I do? Two negatives, because two negatives will make a positive four. And now, here's the trap. A lot of kids get this far and they say, okay, found it, I'm done. Nope. What does it say in the directions? What are you supposed to do? Solve. Do we have an answer yet? No, we just factored it. The answer is, what makes this, and since they're identical, I only have to do it once, what makes 5x minus 2 equal to 0? How about this part of the equation needs to equal 0? So I'm going to add 2 to both sides, 5x equals 2, and then I divide by 5x equals 2 fifths. And if my life is dependent on it, I'll go back and stick 2 fifths in here and here and make sure it actually equals 0. If my life doesn't depend on it, I kind of trust that I did it right. So I'm going to go with how come there's not two answers? Well, there is. It's the same answer twice. So if you graph this thing, what would be happening is it would be bouncing at 0.4. Two fifths is the same as 0.4. So it would be like that. There's two of the same answer because it's a bounce. In case you remember that from HA. All right. Next one, number two. Is there anything that comes out of 15 and 22 and 8? No. But. There's an X that come out all of them. All right. Next one. Do you see that number three is a difference of squares? I'm going to go through and give you a few hints here. It'd be really smart for you to write these down as I go. Number three, difference of squares. Number four is a normal factoring, so nothing to write down there. Number five is, do you get that it's not equal to zero yet? So put add 15. For problem number five, right? Add 15. Okay, next thing on number six. Uh, you need to do that out in the right order. And so what comes first? Timesing by two or squaring the x minus five? Squaring the x minus five. So you got to go x minus five times x minus five. When you're all done with that, you times it by two. Get what I'm saying? There is one more way to do number six, and I want to show you, because it is the better way. It is not what you probably would have thought of, but it'll work great. And let's see if anybody can catch the mistake that I'm going to make. All right, I'm going to divide by two on both sides. And I'll have x minus five squared is equal to 17 divided by two. I don't even know what it is. I'm going to leave it at 17 halves. So far, no mistakes. Next up, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And I have x minus 5 is equal to the square root of 17 halves. I'm almost done. I just got to add 5 to both sides. Add 5, add 5. Nobody's going to stop me. Nobody's going to stop me and say that's a problem. x equals square root of 17 over 2 plus 5. I made a mistake in there. Nobody was able to see it. Do you remember me saying that when you take the square root and it has a variable, it can't just, it seems natural. But what are you supposed to do? absolute value because I did a square root of a variable I warned you it's going to happen to you four major tests and probably including this one tomorrow I'm guessing why because I did a square root to get rid of a squared and that's good but if there's a variable you have to do absolute values and the absolute values 
then means there's going to be two answers. This answer is the, the positive way. X minus 5 is equal to the square root of 17 over 2. Positive. I can leave it plus there. I don't have to. But. And then X minus 5 can equal the opposite of this. Negative. Square root of 17 over 2. And then to actually solve it, I need to add 5 to both sides. And then I'll have my final answer symbol. All right. That was tough. It's pretty good. You do a square root, something that's squared. You gotta need it. You're gonna need absolute values. It's so easy to forget. All right. I pound it into your head enough times so you get it. All right, and let's go to um, number 12 is gonna be the same way. Number 12. And it says 2x plus 3 quantity squared. Now, if you don't want to do this thing I'm doing with the absolute values, you can get away with it. You can get away with not having to deal with that. You just have to do this, 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3, because that's what squared means. And then multiply that all out, and then get 69 over to the other side. Okay, that way it would work. Or, you can just learn the thing I'm trying to teach you. Square root, square root, what is the square root of 169? 13. And this one, remember, that's the value of 2x plus 3. And now my answer is either 2x plus 3 equals 13, just like it says, or 2x plus 3 equals negative 13. Let's solve those two equations, and they're very easy. Once you add 3 to both sides, 2x equals 16, x equals 8. Easy peasy. Over here, I promise you, if you do it right, it'll be easy peasy. Okay. Could you have just multiplied it all out at the beginning like I showed? Sure, because it's squared. You can just multiply it all out, but I think it'll be take you more time in the end. All right, giving you lots to think about. Now, I want to I want to warn you that if you uh, want to come in tomorrow for extra help, you are welcome to do that. But I guarantee you, there'll probably be at least 20 kids in the room. Almost as many kids are in the room right now. Uh, and that means you can't just expect that you're going to get all your problems solved tomorrow. If you study hard tonight and you still have questions you want to go over, I will be here tomorrow morning. But don't expect to like, well, I'm not studying tonight. I'm just going to go in tomorrow morning. That doesn't work. Because I'm going to have so many kids here. I'll be able to, I'll probably go through every problem on here with them. But I can't give you one-on-one -on -one help to help you understand five worksheets that we've done. This is day five. There's no way that's going to happen. You're going to have to be studying tonight. Come in in the morning. If you have a question or two, I can probably answer it. Yes, sir. Uh, did I do it wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. Minus 3, minus 3. Thank you for catching that. All right. And then this is uh, 13 minus 3 is 10. I knew it was an easy answer, but 10. 6 equals 5, 7. <laughs> really hungry? <laughs> 